We now move into our first panel of the evening. They will be speaking on the topic Digital Beyond Marketing. Businesses have typically restricted their use of digital to marketing activities. Beyond this, what more can digital do for the business and customers? And what is the next big focus area for them to adopt the digital opportunity? Our panel moderator is none other than the Chairman and CEO South Asia Densu Ages Network, Mr. Ashish Bhasin. Please welcome him on stage with a huge round of applause. And our panel members are Ajoy Roy Chaudhary, Global Agency Lead, EMEA Facebook, Arnab Goswami, MD and Editor-in-Chief, Republic TV, Pooja Panam, Managing Director, MENA Bliss. Can we please have a huge round of applause for them? Over to you, Mr. Basin now. Thank you. Good evening, everybody, and really nice to see a very full hall. And I'm not at all surprised because of the quality of speakers that we uh, have today on this panel, as well as uh, the ones before and, and the ones coming after. Uh, so thank you very much for coming. Uh, it's really an honor and pleasure to be able to moderate a panel with such uh, eminent, prominent, distinguished people in their, in their respective fields. The slant that we will be taking for this discussion today, this panel today, is actually slightly different from the general digital marketing uh, discussion because at Dense Wages Network, we now believe that, uh, you know, many years ago when I was, and, and believe it or not, I was a young man once, but when I was a young man just starting in advertising, there used to be something run by, I think, the ad club, which was called Advertising Works. So it was like a, some of you who are from that vintage might remember that we used to run sessions which were called Advertising Works. Now, they were very popular, but I used to be really peeved at listening to that be simply because I've never heard doctors say medicines work or engineers say engineering works. So I just felt it was too defensive. Now, fast forward 10 or 15 years later, similar sort of things started happening with digital. Just as much as three to five years ago, we were running a lot of uh, sort of everybody was trying to make efforts to say digital works and therefore clients should get on to digital. I think the key thing that happened in 2018 is that that's now over because frankly, if you have to tell a client that digital works, then that's just not the client you should have in your portfolio. So the focus and slant I would like to take for the, I would like the panel to take for this discussion really is that it's a given digital is and has impacted our lives, but it's not just our lives. I don't think there is any business in India which is not being impacted by digital as we speak. It's a way of doing business. You could be a popcorn seller, you could be a television channel, you could be um, a retail store, but you could be an advertising agency. There is no single business that is not being significantly impacted by digital. And therefore, there is this need for digital transformation. I think no better person to talk to us about that than Arnab. And uh, I really like this opportunity because very rarely uh, does anybody get to ask Arnab a question. So I, I really value this. Uh, and thank you very much, Arnab, for, uh, uh, for coming here. Uh, Arnab is a very dangerous man for advertising. And I've told him this once before. Uh, you know, he launched Republic TV without spending a single rupee on advertising. And before he had launched it, everybody knew what Republic TV was. He just had to go to one college, I think it was in Bangalore. He made one speech over there and it just went viral. And before you knew it, everybody was speculating, Arnab is up to something, it's a channel, it may be called Republic. Of course, all I'm pretty sure well orchestrated, it may be called Republic. And he launched Republic TV without spending a single rupee on advertising, which wasn't very good. But having said that, he's also done one more thing, which is really the area, Arnab, I want you to talk about. When I went to his studio, I could see that he had digitally transformed the business of news. He told me, and Arnab, you take it on from here, that his reporter's office is actually the mobile phone. So a man who's really led digital transformation 
I would like him to act actually start us and tell us about it. How did you see this whole thing go about and, and what are the various things you're doing in that? So Ashish, thank you very much and it's a pleasure to be here with you once again uh, at this event and uh, to share the stage with, with Pooja and with Ajoy. Uh, thank you. I, I can assure you, first I want to tell you this, that I didn't spend a, a penny in advertising. That's not factually correct completely. I spent a little bit, whatever little I had, but it doesn't apply the other way around. So, you know, in case you're trying to pass on a message to me, you, you know, we are not going to return the favor ever to Tensu. So, <laughs> so, you know, till, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you my view on this. My, my funda on this is simple, that till 2013 end, I did not count digital as a medium that I need to look at. Part of that came from the arrogance of television. Part of that came from the revenues that we were living on on television. And, and part of it, that simply came from the impact that we had in television and the fact that you see, Ashish, in India, television is still very new, you know, and, and there is a genuine feeling that television is never going to be edged out, which is also true, it may exist in other forms, but the newness of a medium sometimes makes you look away from something else that is right there before you. So for me, in 2014, when we did the, uh, when we did the elections, I, everyone came to me and said, do this, do this. So I said, why not? I then asked myself, how do I use digital to transform the brand and marketing perception of the channel I was then working for? And then I looked at the marketing budget, which was pathetic. So I said, what do you do with a marketing budget that is so small, it's not going to get you one-fourth of the front page of the Times of India. What we did was we took all that money and we invested it in one hoarding at Times Square in New York. So we said that we, this idea came to us on a flight where we said this money, you know, we, you know, marketing teams give us, look at the money and the marketing teams do this linear management, you know, uh, X, Y, Z, radio, X, Y, Z, this, X, I said, that if, I, if I'm going to spread it out, then let, can I bring my content mind to it? So I said, it'd be beautiful also for the ultimate narcissist that I am. I just imagined myself being watched by people who have nothing to do but watch the elections live on a screen in Times Square, New York. But then along with that, we thought we'll add a different element of virality. So we spread a WhatsApp message in the relevant groups in New York among students in the Indian community and we said, samosa party on result day. And so we hired people and we bought the samosas and there were 2,000 samosas being indiscriminately scattered all over New York and we had a crowd. And that became a fantastic WhatsAppable video. What it did for me was that first it was a beautiful statement because each time you were hosting your program live and you're saying, you know, BJP at 200, Congress at 30, what's going to happen? By the way, what's happening in New York? Let's go across New York and then you go to the screen and then you have a samosa party going on then the people there on the screen are watching themselves on the big screen and then they start clapping so there's four screens all around, right? Very exciting. But later I saw the domino effect of that. The domino effect of that was that the only talked about fact besides Narendra Modi being elected, there was one moment when we called the election. So that video got WhatsApped multiple times where I said at about, I think, 11.26, I said, I think we called the election for the BJP. So that, that got WhatsApped. The only other video that got WhatsApped was that of the Samosa party in New York. And they said, you know, the channel has reached New York. So it just gave off you know, at that boisterous moment of a government change and a spirit in the country got merged with that moment. And it told me that the nature of marketing completely changes if you use digital. Now, before I pass on the mic, I'll just give one more example from the recent times. Take the most popular conversation in political circles today, which is the Rafael controversy. Every day you hear offset, this, that, you know, Rahul Gandhi never gives up and it continues, Supreme Court verdict or not, continues, continues. So, Ashish, it so happened, as you know, we are launching Bharat. So, 
till about 8:55 i'm working on the forthcoming hindi channel at 8:55 my producers called me that you know please could you come to the studio you still have to do a show on english channel so at 8:55 i go and over the last few days i have not been writing my lead story usually at 8:30 i write the first 2 minutes of my show i started dictating it and i realized that when you speak your language is different from when you write so that day i was in a great hurry so i dictated a lead story in which i said because i was feeling so fed up with things i said listen rafael is the biggest fake news story of the world and then i went on and on a little bit little hyperbolic and that went on for one and a half minutes ashish i have never got so much traction on anything i have done then the one and a half minute lead story where i went fundamental to the core and i said rafael is a fake news story the story has fallen flat nobody else but rahul gandhi and his chumchas believe it anymore the supreme court has said no to it etc etc the beauty of it was that 3 days back uh, one of these websites published an article where there's an 11 year old boy in london who has done the same lead story with the exact words that i used and he's done it in his way and then he's added four more questions of his to rahul gandhi i kept looking at that and i said look at the magnificent impact of a digital medium b easy and simple language three communicating with a generation who would not have talked about rafael in any case and fourth it's gone global so i have often looked at these moments and i want this panel to maybe think about the fact that digital as a medium whether it's that 2 minute video on rafael or the shot of somebody in new york at a samosa party conveys much more than traditional advertising so when we are now doing our launch to bharat it is almost i can confidently tell you 95% digital marketing content creation that we are doing on our own focusing on the centrality of the message we want to send on bharat the nature has changed your lines have changed people are informal and i think it lasts for much longer than traditional advertising so i'm a big proponent of it and i just wanted to use these two examples as conversation starters thank you for thank sharing you. that uh, arnab and that'll be music to the ears of our eight digital agencies in densuages network and the several partners who uh, uh, practice digital out here and thanks for sharing that pooja over to you uh, as a managing director of bliss which is incidentally a geo targeting based uh, uh, digital product i should say in that yeah. sense you have a very different world view than what we do in india you're coming in from a market which is uh, perhaps in some ways more digitally evolved than india is but then in some ways maybe has less skill sets than what india does certainly lesser scale many of the markets that you work in what is your view when you look at it out, uh, from outside in what do you see happening in india which is a potential or which is different or something else that we should be doing in the context of businesses digitally transforming themselves yeah thank you thank you you hear me okay thank you shish yes you're right so one of my first visits um to mumbai was last month and what really really blew me away was all the ott content that's being produced here locally with netflix producing 400 pieces of content is absolutely fantastic and the market that i'm in in the mena region we don't have so much content i mean only 3% of content online is arabic so there's a real challenge around content creation content production and how consumers then can gain information via the internet now india has the absolute opposite problem there's great talent here great opportunities um to work with very very intelligent smart people that are coming out of universities um and they're really working hard so Mina region yeah we do have a talent deficit and that's because of you know a lot of it is because the education system um lack of uh, the the relevant degrees to put them into the new working places and India doesn't have that at all so it was a very positive experience now bliss we've seen the opportunity there's a question earlier that came from the audience is how do outside companies outside of india european companies american companies how they're finding the growth of india and the opportunities there are here So we're a company that's 14 years old and we've always been in the location space providing brands advertisers company with incredible audience data and mass movement data. 
And what they do with that data then enables them to shape their business on how they target audiences, how they target their consumers and segment their consumers. So we see India as being a huge market opportunity for someone like Bliss, where consumers are so connected, the, the 400 devices, 400 million devices that you have here, we connect to about 180 million devices in the MENA market. So the opportunity to work with advertisers, um, and we work with huge advertisers like JLR across the board. We haven't started working with them here, so we're hoping to get them on board and provide them with use cases. But the opportunity to use geolocation technology and data to shape the businesses and how the brands work with us is going to be really exciting for us. Thank you. Thanks for sharing that, uh, Pooja. Ajoy, over to you, and thank you, first of all, for flying in from uh, all the way from London. Absolute pleasure. Uh, Absolute pleasure. We are uh, heading towards our elections. No one knows Absolutely. that better than Arnab does. And Facebook, in the context of elections, has been in the news sometimes for good reasons and sometimes not. And I think uh, it is a fact that, rightly, wrongly, digital is going to play a significant role almost in the formation of governments or in the facilitation of that. How does Facebook look at it? I'm sure you guys have grappled with the good of it and the bad of it. And uh, how do you see the Indian elections? Because that's really, the eyes are going to be on digital media in that sense. Absolutely. And it's uh, something that we take very, very seriously and have done for the last, uh, obviously for the last couple of years. Uh, to the extent by the end of this year, we'd have focused on probably nearly 50 elections. Last year, there were the the Indian state elections, so the midterm elections, Brazilian presidency. This is, this is the big one. This is the election which is the, the largest democracy in the world. And there are a number of things that we're doing to make sure that there is an integrity to these elections. First of all, there is that element of how do we fight fake accounts? Those accounts that come up that uh, then create some content, nefarious content that, that can sent throughout our platform. Well, we're doing a lot on that. Every single day, over a million accounts are turned off or, or blocked. We sweep every day via AI, but also via people as well, to ensure those, that content doesn't get uh, within our platform. Another interesting part, everyone talks about it, false news, fake news. Very, very important that we combat that and we learn from election after election. What are we doing? What are we doing around fake news? First of all, it's about education. What, are we, what we found is that particularly MPs, their staff, uh, electoral, chief election officers, chief ministers, they come under a lot of pressure and there is the chance that their accounts themselves could be hacked. So we are doing education. We've got uh, a cyber guides to all of these people to say, this is what to look out for. This is what to, to ensure, look at the signals to ensure the integrity of your sites. And with that, we also move into, uh, we're looking at third party fact checking. Very, very important. Check the facts. Uh, for example, we use uh, a relationship with AFP. So these are the things that we're doing, but one of the key things is when it comes to actual traditional marketing, getting our message out to the public, for them to understand this is what misinformation is, this is what you need to look out for, and therefore, this is what you can do about it. Uh, and in particular, there's gonna be campaigns as we get into the elections in the press, in the dailies, and WhatsApp's gonna be very, very important. We've just discussed how amazing it is, how it can connect, but particularly, you know, we want it, WhatsApp to be safe, secure, and reliable, and that's an absolute must for the elections. So there's a number of things that we're doing that you, you probably know in, the, in India that you can only forward to now five groups. Uh, we're in a position now where if there is a media uh, article, you can't forward it immediately. There's lots of things that we're doing around WhatsApp that we want to make sure that is safe, secure, and reliable for the election. Uh, and one other thing, which is again, we're learning from traditional media. If you now want to do a political ad, you need to, we're increasing ads transparency. So you know how to tell us and get authorized uh, uh, to run those ads. We need to know who you are, but also very important when you look at previous elections, we need to know where you are. Are you from India? Are you from this, from that particular state? And then and only then will we authorize you. And then there's an opportunity for a, a community 
there'll be an ad registered. You'll be able to see every single ad that that political party or organization has run. So we're learning, uh, and we're learning fast. One of the key things is you have to learn fast, and we need to stay ahead of the bad actors. We hope we do that. Thanks, uh, Ajoy. Uh, Adab, he touched on a very important part of fake news. I think uh, definitely digital has significant advantages, but one of the areas so far, at least in India, where the traditional media has had an advantage is that I think, relatively speaking, they've been less plagued by fake news, whether it is print or it is uh, television. Unfortunately, digital, that hasn't been the case. Hopefully, we learn and we learn fast, like Facebook is saying. Do you see that as a problem for digital or do you see that permeating all media, including television, at some stage? See, I have a slightly different take on it. I believe that fake news is a big problem. There's no doubt about it. But the fact is that now global giants like Facebook are handling this situation with their backs on the wall. Their backs are to the wall. They're defensive. They're on the defensive, so they have to put up hoardings all across the London subway saying, we're against fake news. We, we are doing this against fake news on a daily basis. We are fighting fake news. It's essentially because of things like Cambridge Analytica, stuff like that, which has dented the credibility of Facebook or and any other global ma major would then say that, you know, the, the entire posturing, please don't mind my saying it, Ajoy, of Facebook is extremely defensive, extremely defensive on fake news. Fake news is a problem, but you don't need an advertising campaign to fight fake news. That seems to me like your cleansing your conscience, almost saying that, listen, we're not doing it. Let me present the situation very differently. I think digital should be an agent of social change and transformation. But a defensive digital medium cannot be the source, cannot be an agent of social change and transformation. And that's what I told, you know, when, when you know, this, the marketing genius, you should have invited him here today, he's the greatest marketing genius in the country called Arvind Kejriwal. You should have invited him. <laughs> Because truly, he, and he also is, by the way, one of the greatest exponents of fake news. Because he swore in my interview to him that I will, I will you know, jump off a building, but I'll never join politics. <laughs> exactly what that other fellow who wants a civil war called Jignesh Mewani said also before becoming an MLA. That's fake news. But on a serious note, let me say one thing. Let me put a slightly provocative question. How did Nirbhaya start? So Ajay, this will be interesting, you know, I could throw this at Ajay back, that in, in after, the, after the gang rape of 2012, there were Twitter hashtags, hashtag Delhi gang rape, hashtag stop this shame, hashtag Delhi protest, hashtag Nirbhaya, hashtag Damini. And all these hashtags were galvanizing these protests against a case of rape. And there was one tweet, Ashish, by one 19 year old, one tweet by one 19-year-old, which I have the details here, led to more than 1,700 people. The, the tweet of that 19-year-old said, illegally being held at Parliament Street Police Station with 15 other women, terrified, please RT. And this tweet was forwarded by 1,700 people. And according to Favstar, which is a social media analytics site, within 10 minutes, it reached 200,000 people. That one tweet led to six days of street protests. Believe me, today Twitter would not have the guts to let such retweeting happen. Believe me, an Anna Hazare campaign, which we then did, I remember people said we were activists when, this, when the campaign against corruption happened. We fought against corruption for six months. Ajay broke five scams, after which the marketing team called India Against Corruption came and tried to galvanize attention on it, which is why I've, I've said freely uh, that Kiran Bedi, Yogendra, the Prashant Bhushan, and Arvind Kejriwal, and even Mr. Anna Hazare had no contribution in the fight against corruption. We fought against corruption. But when they made the India Against Corruption thing, we backed them. And it became a hashtag. And then again, almost for four days, the government was brought to a standstill. It was possible because at that point of time, Facebook, Twitter, all the others were not taking a defensive posture. Today, today, you do a campaign and Facebook and Twitter will first go and explain themselves. It's not only in India. Globally, Facebook, Twitter, all the big 
global digital media giants have their backs to the wall because their own credibility is being questioned and are being asked, did you sell your data? Did you give your data away? And they are, because they are giving all these Senate briefings and they're going to every country and be giving congressional briefings, they already got their backs to the wall. So my, the sadness in my heart is over the fact that digital, which could not just be a good marketing tool, but also an agent of social change, it is perhaps a reality which will not happen. People ask me, why do you put out tweets every day on your show? Do you need it? I don't, but I enjoy the sense of virality of a conversation. But with regulations being put in, you can only WhatsApp to five people so that you know, you're not spreading a bad message. You're on the, always putting ads on fake news. You're not in a position to consolidate social change. And I think that's where one fundamental responsibility of the digital medium is being lost. And you're safeguarding your business interests, but you're not safeguarding your social obligations. So it's a, it's a double-edged sword in that sense. Look, it's, it's a very valid point. And I think one of the things that we've realized in the last 12 months or so is the great responsibility that we have. And with that responsibility, we take that very cautiously and wisely what we do next. Uh, and so for some reasons, it may be seen that we are overcautious. But right now, we would prefer to be in that place uh, so we can understand more what is happening to our platform or more importantly, what are these bad actors doing and what can we do to decrease them but at the same time, what can we do to ensure that free speech is still something that happens on our platform and others as well. It is an interesting time but it is a, a great time of responsibility for us as well. Thank you, Ajoy. And to quickly get you off the mat, because you have no idea when Arnab starts on it, where it can lead no, to. I, <laughs> let I, me, I, let I, me, I, I, let I, me change the topic totally. I, it's fine. <laughs> I, I enjoy it. I've been warned by many cousins and my mother. They've told me exactly what to expect. <laughs> let, let, me, let me then ask you a personal question. You told me that you're coming to India after 15 years, right? I mean, two things were different. One was that Arnab Goswami was not that well known then and the other bit was that digital wasn't as big uh, then as it is now. Is there anything else that you feel is different about Mumbai after 15 years? Well, um, you know, that's, I find it fascinating. I've actually been coming since 1980, 1983, all the way through to this time. So I was describing to all of the cricket tours that I remember seeing come over here. One of the good things is, is that India are now beating Australia. So that's a, that's a, that's a change. That is a good change. <laughs> Uh, look, it's always been an entrepreneurial city and also one of the things that I find fascinating as I, I'm very fortunate to travel the world is that it's a, it, it's a very young city and I think it's a very young country and that has so much energy and that ability to... Uh, the cultural change that the young people can have and they, they want to question people and it's not about hierarchy, it's about who's got the best idea and those are the sort of businesses that I'm seeing... Um, not just in Mumbai, but I can sense in other parts of India, but that attitude is, is the thing that's gonna continue India's growth. And I think it's very, very exciting just seeing that attitude of challenging hierarchy. It's not about hierarchy, I said it's about the right idea, and it's about collaboration. We see that younger generation are all about collaboration. And I think some of those the older generations in the more traditional uh, industries, like, oh, I'm not gonna talk to that person in their own business, let alone a competitor. But in this world, I think the attitude needs to be, how can you, what is the best thing you can do for the customer, and who do we need to partner to make that happen? Thanks. Um, Anup, uh, there are two things that you said which actually resonated very much with what Rajan and Vivek were discussing before. Uh, clearly, they said that vernacular and voice amongst the three things, and, and of course video, are going to be big. In some ways, you're at the cusp of all three, right? Video is, in a sense, what built you and your channel. Uh, you're now about to launch a Hindi channel, which takes you into vernacular and, in a sense, gives you a much bigger, uh, uh, much bigger platform, I would say, because at the end of the day, English does have a limitation uh, on that. And the third thing is voice. You spoke about dictating that and that having a very different tone. So clearly we are seeing this as a common theme that video, voice and vernacular is going to be the way forward for digital. Is that going to impact television, communication or is that only going to be around digital? Are you seeing some changes in those areas in the years to come? So uh, right now we are getting, for example, into, a, into the biggest and most competitive distribution market 
in the country which is Hindi news. So over the last one month, uh, I have been traveling from Ludhiana, Bhatinda, Udaipur, Jabalpur, UP, Madhya Pradesh, Chhattisgarh. I'm going to go to Bihar. I'm really excited. And wherever we are going, we are meeting people. So there's a handshake and everyone says, best of luck. So we asked them, why are you going to back us? They said, you know, you, you represent a, a, a feeling that India can, you know, you believe in the country. I said, yes, I believe in the country. So we called it Republic Bharat, Rashtra Ke Naam. And that's our slogan. So one is that when you go into a market, I always believe one thing about the Indian market, Ashish. This is a market, Ajay, which is not just entrepreneurial, as you said. It is perennially greenfield. You know, 25 years from now, if Republic becomes one big giant company, there will still be somebody out there who can individually come and challenge it. It is a greenfield country in its spirit. You know, and that is the beauty of this country, where you generally feel you can move mountains. You know, so if I, for example, just came in, I was just telling someone, five weeks back, I had two million reach in Hindi. I penetrated. After five weeks, we've gone and got our report. We have 130 million penetration already, which is available and running, right, as a, as a free-to-air channel. So one is the beauty of this country as a nature. As far as uh, language is concerned, we are slowly becoming accent agnostic. Let me explain this. I don't know what accent I speak Hindi in. A mix of Assamese beats Bengali meets what, I don't know, but I speak Hindi. And my accent in Hindi doesn't matter. I can speak it with a Bihari accent, I can speak with UP accent, I can speak it with a South Indian accent. People are getting into cognitive understanding. And therefore, we, as a complex country, we are becoming a more homogenous country where we forgive accents. Like, you know, when I always say, I studied in a Kendriya Vidyale. So I say, I speak English with a Kendriya Vidyale accent. I didn't go to Dun school, I don't need to pretend. So Dun school accent is not required in India today. Kendriya Vidyale accent is acceptable. Indian team changed because Virat Kohli did not go to Dun school. Believe me, if he went to Dun school, he'd be playing ping pong by now. <laughs> the, the, the question is this. As a competitive and yet complex country, we are becoming forgiving and accepting of each other. So I have two options. People ask me, what, when you do Hindi, what will happen? People are taking it as a certainty will be successful. That also puts a lot of pressure. But suppose we do Hindi, what will we do next? Somebody yesterday asked me, we were recruiting someone. I said, you know what? There's so much vernacular, I'm going to go global. And I think I want to answer your question on voice and the other issues. And you said that, you see, you mentioned, Pooja, that you, when you come, you see a lot of OTT. Believe me, six months back, there was no content being created. It's a compulsion of the business that is content is being created for that. It's out of compulsion, but at the same time, it's organically happening. We have to be the content capital of the world, Ashish. Only we can be for three reasons. One, we are accent and language agnostic. We are genuinely we are. When I started Times Now, I keep saying I had people from 12 nationalities because we got Chris Sehan and uh, of Reuters to invest 26% in Times Now. And so the deal was that he will send 40 nationalities people to train here. So people from New York, Dubai, everybody came. I trained them in lower parallel, including in the form of local abuse. But, but, the, but the fact is they integrated into my newsroom. And I kept saying that if I can, and the guy I trained is now the global editor of CNN Digital. So I say, if at least he was till a couple of years back. So I said, if he could do that and I trained him, why can't I be the global capital of the world? We can create fiction, non-fiction and news. And we can create video, we can create audio, we can create print. But the most exciting option for Indians as genuine content creators is create video content, language agnostic. Create the content globally, but curate it in India. Because when you curate that content locally, you are curating it at 10% of the cost that you would in London or New York. 10% of the cost of a vice. As good quality. So I think the next challenge for us is to say that we're playing the Indian game. We are very proud to have 800, 900 channels. Can there be one channel, one digital platform, one content creation company, one OTT platform? Some of the content being created is fabulous. Fabulous. That film Uri is fabulous. 
it also tells me that you can create a film like that and only give it a different socio-cultural context. You can. Problem is we are right now limiting ourselves to our geography because by nature Indians are not culturally expansionist. And we believe that if we, people laugh at me, I said that listen, I can get you the story on Trump quicker and faster than anyone else. They laugh at me. But believe me, you can. We just have to have the confidence. So I think next step, Ashish, using digital, step beyond the geography of India. Create a bunch of super confident Indian professionals. Start creating global content companies out of India. Not global content companies with one base in India, no. Create a global content company from India, which we are going to do by the end of 2019, when Republic expands and does the digital global game. But there are many others who can also do it, and we can create many Bloombergs and many CNNs out of this soil. And this is the beautiful time to do it. Arnab, I'm a very nationalistic India believer, and my, my team knows it, my children know it. But I really feel small when I listen to you because you take it up to a different level. So I believe in it. Ashish, I have evangelized this. I believe in it. You know, Ashish, when I met you, people said, why did you start Republic? I said, I only wanted to be financially stable and independent. But I don't want to do that. I think it is your and my response. People in the room, you ask them right now, would you be proud if today, not a Republic or any company, would play a global game and, and would center out and create content for Singapore and New York? You can do it. If Arnab Goswami can speak Hindi, you can do anything. <laughs> so, you know, I, I, my point is that we can play the global game and I think some of those OTT players are just dying to go global. And I think they will do it in the next one or two years. And I use that as a challenge to my team sitting here, the Densu Ages Network team sitting here, that we've got to go now and not look at India. Uh, of course, we are going to capture that, but we've got to now look at the world. So, and now this is Arnab's word, so it's got to happen. Uh, Pooja, over to you. <coughs> You know, we, when we are in India, and some of us are very passionate about it, you, you saw how Arnab was, uh, I know I am, many of my colleagues are, we are very, very passionate about it and we sometimes tend to see more of the good and the opportunity, but we also miss out the fact that it's actually a very difficult country for somebody coming from outside to do business in, in many ways. Uh, without being polite, can you tell us that somebody coming from outside in, trying to do business here, what are the big difficulties, what are the problem areas that you face, which, which India should look at and probably address it differently, uh, not just in digital marketing, but overall? Um, I'm Indian, right? We're Indian. So um, we speak the same language. We have the same mindsets. A joy is exactly the same as me. So we already have a great template to enter the marketplace and it's probably one of the reasons why I was given the responsibility to cover Indian because I understood the marketplace here. And, you know, my mum worked at BA, British Airways when we were younger. And every single summer from the age of five years old, she took advantage of the fact that she had very low cost tickets and sent us to Delhi every single year for about 15 years until we said, enough's enough, mum, we've had enough of Delhi. So it gave me a very, very strong template of what it means to be Indian and how to conduct yourself in business within family environments and how to shop, right? So bargaining, really, I learned that from coming from my holidays here. Now, when you come as an outsider and coming in, so last month I was here and one of, two of our uh, VPs came along with me and it's the first time that they've been to um, India to do business and uh, they're English. And one of the things that they found really difficult was they couldn't get a word in edgeways. Sorry, Arnab. <laughs> they couldn't get a word in edgeways. So they had to really understand the business uh, and, and the industry. Show? What, was that on Arnab's show or in general? Oh, I don't know. No, it definitely wasn't on Arnab's show. I didn't think they'll be able to uh, catch up with Arnab at that <laughs> speed. But um, trying to get an, a word in edgeways and really understand how to... Um, exchange information. So it was very one way, one way, one way. And it would be great when you know, they come back again and they've learned now. They've just got to listen. They come here and they've just got to listen. Um, and it gives, them a, a, it gives them great insights right in the region here. Um, what's fascinating is Uber. Uber was fantastic here. They came in and they could just get Ubers everywhere. And they're based in London, right? So you know the issues that Uber have had in London with the government. And here it's just an open economy as to it's easy to do business if you get it 
right. If you know the right people, it's easy to do business. If you're open-minded, it's easy to do business. You can't bring in your European mindset, your American mindset, and expect to do business in the same fashion. It works very differently. It's very relationship-driven. Um, it's very respectful. Um, it's very, very intelligent. Right? So you really need to swat up on what you're going to be talking about and who are you going to be talking to when you're coming to India. So a lot of it is more cultural, Ashish, than, um, than anything else. Thank you, uh, Puja. I think you're absolutely right. We also need to listen more because we do talk a lot. <laughs> Ajoy, uh, one question to you. I mean, it is undoubtable that India is a very, very important market for many multinational companies. I'm, I'm pretty sure for Facebook, it's one of the large markets and you probably see a lot of growth coming from India. While that is recognized, and that's probably true for Google, that's probably true for LinkedIn, and probably true for 50 other companies I can think of. But while that is true, we still see everything invented in the West and brought in into India. And that's not necessarily the best for us. And I don't mean Facebook as an example, but in general, right? That may not be most apt. Everything that works in New York or uh, California or London need not necessarily work as well in Mumbai or better still in Meerut, correct? So when will multinational companies, digital companies start recognizing and realizing that it's time that they invented and created products in India, which then as what Arnab was saying, probably might one day go out, but create products for this market. Do you think that's a problem? Look, I think um, this is India's time. That's one of the things that we know. Uh, even in the region, where there are two big players in the region, but we believe India is the one that it has the future, it has got a dynamism to it. And I suppose when I look at it, it's about confidence. The confidence that you show is I think the confidence that needs to be shown by the business community, not to ask why these things happen, just make it happen. Do it the other way. Have that, uh, that drive to understand that you are Indians, this Mumbai business community, as good, if not better, than anywhere else. So make it happen. I think that's, and I think that's going to be the. I can see that confidence. I can see that confidence here. I can see that confidence on the cricket field. It's this is the time. Just be confident and make it happen. Is what I'd say. Thank you, uh, Ajoy. Adab, last year I asked you this question, and you had one answer. I'm going to try and see if uh, anything has changed on that. Uh, at the end of the day, while digital is very important and all of that, you are essentially have been built your channel and you on television, right? And even today, I'm sure a lot of your revenue or most of your revenue probably comes in. That's, where, that's what brings the uh, bacon home, so to speak. Uh, but you do realize that digital is where it is going to be maybe two years, five years, ten years from now because you're one of the smartest businessmen I've met and you clearly will recognize that. How are you balancing that? This is building you, but that's where the future is. Yes. Uh, thank you. I think that's, uh, that's, that's very important. Thank you for asking me that question. Because my faith in TV does not mean I have any contempt for digital at all. Um, we have today, out of our roughly about 750 or 800 people at Republic, I'm happy to say that uh, we would have about, uh, you know, about 100 to maybe now by next year, another 150. So we would be one of the larger employers in digital. So we would have about 150 to 200 people in digital, including, including uh, people who are working on product in a deeper way with content. So there are two innovations I'm doing. So let me then take you, since you asked me straight, I'll just give the answer with what my business strategy is. And I'm very transparent about it. I have nothing to hide. I, I do TV because television breaks even quickly with a successful product. As a content guy, I create the product, product is accepted, we distribute it aggressively, and we get the advertising for it, we break even. So that's been a simple philosophy in TV. In digital, what we have done, Ashish, is that we have started, we're the first TV broadcasting house to have a large, large engineering and product presence out of Bangalore. So I built a third office, a fourth, fourth office, which is based out of Bangalore, which only does, uh, which is only tech. 
So we have taken a decision to do our own tech and on the basis of our innovations, we built, Ajay, you, you like this, we will build homegrown the lightest news app in the world, which is like maybe 2.5 MB, really light. Uh, and, and, and we were really happy when we did it that we didn't outsource the engineering to anyone else. So we have really strong digital people ready. Then we've done a new experiment which we call a content production combined team experiment. We broke the walls between people who understood product, which means people who understood how the message was to be communicated with people who were doing the message. And yesterday we had a meeting for Bharat, 27 people from the content production team came in and said, said, tell us the message and we take over the dissemination. And then we tell the tech team in Bangalore how to create ways in which it can be disseminated. So right now I'm investing in digital to expand the brand appeal of Republic and Republic Bharat. But by about April or May this year, once Republic Bharat is true, we're going to really mushroom this digital team. And, and it's my investment into the future. Uh, we will go completely vernacular on digital. We'll have digital in many languages and then we'll go global. So yes, I am strongly investing. Yes, we are happy to lose money on digital, a little money, not a lot of it, but, but, but we are happy to lose money on digital at this stage as an independent business, not because we want to give it crutches, but because we believe that by 2020 the time will come where we will be able to merge our broadcast business in a more direct way with our digital business. Till then, it's like a leap of faith. It's our love for digital which is taking us through. So I'm a great believer in it and uh, it's the way we will go global, so I have great affection for digital because I can't go to the US market with content on cable and satellite, but I can certainly go, it on, go on digital. So yeah, we've been at the front end. Just want to follow this up by saying we did tie-ups with Microsoft when Satya Nadella was here, then we tied up with them. We, I met Satya. Uh, we were the first ones to convert to the usage of Azure. We've been experimental on every platform. I met the head of LinkedIn here. Uh, we had a partnership with LinkedIn. Our entire recruitment was via LinkedIn. So we very non-traditional in our use of the digital medium so far. Fantastic. Great to hear. I think with that we are running out of time. Perhaps there is time for one or two questions. So if anybody has a question in the audience, please put your hand up and yep, yep, just somebody get the mic or maybe you can shout through till then. Yeah, you can. Uh, hi, uh, yeah, sir. Uh, my question would be to Arnab. Uh, what do you think uh, now with the elections coming up, how important do you think will digital play in the entire uh, thing versus your uh, traditional media? Uh, it'll play enormous, enormous number. Uh, for example, we had uh, roughly 20 million uh, video view minutes during the last uh, assembly election. Now, if we match our linear, it's a television and non-linear feeds, we put it together, the most amazing statistic actually is we had more people watching our content on digital than watching it on TV. They, I, I should not be saying it because then people would say you give the digital advertising rates on TV, I will not say it. But what I'm saying is it's a fabulous thing. So when Vikas Kanchandani, some of you may know him, a brilliant guy, he's our CEO, he showed me this number. I said, Vikas, impossible. He said, it's true. I said, you're, you're faking it. I said, it's true. I, are you saying that more people watched us on digital already? And then I said, did we do any marketing? Did we do anything? Or, Inorgan we did nothing inorganic and one more thing Ashish I tell you I have never bought a single like as a matter of ethics I don't buy audiences the one thing I'd say to you never buy inorganic reach to many of our competitors including the big media houses who are getting desperate that so many people read them on the paper but they have to show that people watch them I found out, I won't name the organization, one of India's biggest media houses is buying truckloads of viewership. I don't know why, to fool advertisers? To go back to them and say people watched us? No, inorganic reach. When people like you, they'll come to you automatically. So yes, I'm very excited. And I think this time, in this election, twice as many people will watch us on digital compared to TV. So Inorganically. That, okay, so that means uh, you would say that digital uh, platform or the medium is better than your traditional TV in no, terms no, of when it comes to marketing. It, you don't compare. It's apples and oranges, you see. I'll tell you one small answer. Don't compare it. 
if someone tells me today, if digital is not monetizable, should you not make the effort to get that reach? No, you should. Uh, it's, it, both audiences are different. Just because today there is no advertising matrix that s gets into digital doesn't mean it won't happen in the future. So I think both are high quality audiences. Nature of viewing is different. When you're watching TV, when you're watching my show, you're watching it with a family in a conversation. When you're, when you're seeing me, it's a more singular experience. So both are beautiful, both in terms of content and viewing experience. Thank you so much. I think we'll take one last question if, if anybody has a question. Yes, sir. You guys decide. <laughs> Okay, quick, but then a short question, please. Uh, hi, uh, I'm Kumaresh. My question is for Aruna. Uh, there are two points. Firstly, being on digital, people broadcast themselves. They have their own opinion. And being on television, you give the opinion. You actually broadcast yourself to many, a lot of people. These are two points. Now, we have been seeing many media houses who are ideologically driven. Many media houses, they're ideologically driven. So don't you think it's a conflicting for these two pillars, like they get may, may get exposed or something, like digital is having no own voice and ideological driven media is having no own voice. So can there be some conflict in these two things? See, it's not one or two. Everybody has an opinion. Some disguise it, some don't. Simple answer to you. Do you believe the Hindu does not have an opinion? The Hindu newspaper has an opinion of its own. Republic has an opinion of its own. People read too much into it. Now, I believe I come from a world where I'm not embarrassed or ashamed to have an opinion. I'm not going to go into the studio or tell my reporters. Yesterday, we did a meeting. Let me answer your question differently. I met all my anchors for the Hindi channel. They said, boss, what would you like us to do on the Hindi channel? I said, unleash yourself. You represent a new wave of journalists in this country. Don't be squeamish about your opinion. Ideological differences are not the right word. Perspectives will be different. Each perspective does not transform into an ideology. Ideology is a much more all-encompassing thing. You're a leftist, you're a rightist. That's not. We have a right to have our opinion. And I think that does not... The audience is smart enough to discriminate for themselves. Secondly, also consider sometimes I force my opinion to provoke you to give yours. Hence, I become a higher engagement medium. As long as I'm not, I don't have any selfish interest or financial interest in doing it, I think it's fine. Uh, hi Arnav, uh, my name is Abhinav. I'm a journalist and on this startup called Street Journals. Uh, the problem of fake news as we know today, uh, well, this problem existed even in the pre-medieval times, but as we know today. As a journalist, do you think the problem will be solved through technology? Or do you think that people themselves will collectively come to an understanding that fake news exists? and uh, eventually it will depend on the knowledge of people. Which one do you think will drive more in the I future? I think it's the second one, you know. I think self-regulation is better. Uh, technologically, Ajay is in a better position to tell you and, you know, they are doing their best with things like artificial intelligence to localize. But, you know, eventually there's nothing that beats the human mind in terms of identifying fake news. And, and uh, just the awareness that fake news exists itself, in my view, uh, holds it back. So I become more conscious. Uh, simply to tell you one thing, I'll answer this differently. Today, one factual inaccuracy, you know, one day in the course of my debate, I mispronounced or misspelled the name of the father of the nation. So instead of saying Mohandas Karamchand Gandhi, I said Karamchand Gandhi, I said something wrong. That got retweeted like a million times, like we got you, or no, you know, you don't know your stuff. You cannot make a factual mistake and if if you lie, you'll be caught. So I think because viewers are so aware. I, when we were in college, we were not as politically aware. We became politically aware after Mandal. Today's people are more politically aware. The problem today is opinion without fact. So that's also a danger. But yes, fake news will go away through regulation of a very aware and august audience. You can't fool people nowadays. Thank you. Thank you. I think with an interesting panel like this, we can just go on and on, but uh, we have to bring this panel to an end. Let me really thank Pooja, Ajoy, and of course, Arnav for a fantastic panel. Give them a big hand, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much for that.